this week on HomeKit News, the Sensario smoke detector with matter and thread. Welcome back everybody. Today we're looking at a new device that I've been testing out prior to release, hence the plain box. This is a matter device and better still, it's matter over thread. So this is the new MS1 smoke detector from a company called Sensario. Despite being new to smart home products, they already make non-smart smoke and carbon monoxide sensors, so they're not a new company as such. For those in the European Union and also the UK, these detectors come with the EU standard EN14604 certified by TUV Rhineland, as well as both the CE and ROHS certification standards. Oh, that was a mouthful. It's not currently certified for use in the US, although I'm told they're working on the relevant certifications for that. Here are some specs, so pause the video now if you wish, but this is a photoelectric sensor, which I'll talk more about later. It's matter over thread, as previously mentioned, so it should work with all matter platforms as long as you have a thread border router. And the siren is 85 dB, which is the required volume for smoke detectors. Let's have a quick look at the contents of the box now, and this is the device itself, which is admittedly a bit plain looking. You also get a mounting plate for putting it on a ceiling. You also get a couple of screws and roll plugs for fixing the ceiling plate, although it would have been good if it came with some adhesive stickers. And finally, mine came with a CR123A battery, although the manual, which also didn't come in my package, doesn't mention a provided battery, so you may have to purchase one separately. Let's go a bit deeper now, and if you look closely, there's a built-in battery that can't be removed. This powers the sensor itself and will last for the life of the device. There's also a matter code on the back so that you can add it to Apple Home. If you were able to take the sensor apart, you can see that there are two batteries, the aforementioned built-in battery and the replaceable battery. The front or down facing section has a test and silence button dead center, which makes it easy to find. The siren itself is 85 dB, but due to the type of sound it is required to use, it's as loud as most smoke detector sirens out there. All four sides feature vents to allow the sensor to pick up particles that will then trigger the alarm. Last of all, there's a multicolor LED that in normal operation is off, but will show flashing green when in pairing mode. If smoke is detected and the alarm is triggered, no surprise, the LED will flash rapidly in red and flash once every eight seconds if temporarily hushed or muted. It's also going to flash in red in self-test mode. If the LED flashes yellow every 45 seconds, then the removable battery needs replacing, although if it flashes yellow more rapidly, there's going to be a fault. The company offers a seven year warranty on the device, which is essentially the same length of time the non-removable battery should last before the whole device needs replacing, which is a standard procedure for all smoke detectors. At 4.33 inches wide and about 1.64 inches deep, it's not the smallest smoke sensor, but I guess it's not designed to win any beauty contests. The back has a removable panel that's designed to house the replaceable battery I mentioned earlier, which is pretty easy to access, and also on the back is an on-off switch so I can activate it like so. Turning it around, I can also simply press the test button to make sure the siren works, which it most definitely does. What's clever is that when you connect the smoke detector to the bracket, the bracket automatically turns the sensor on, so you never need to worry if you accidentally left it in the off position when putting it in place. So once it's turned and locked into position, you can see the bracket turns the switch to the on position, which is quite clever. I'm going to add this sensor directly to Apple Home now, as there's no third party app required or even available. If you're new to Matter devices, these are added in exactly the same way as a standard HomeKit device and follow the same procedure. For now, I'm going to add this to the corridor so you can see an existing smoke detector located there as well, which is a collaboration between Xiaomi and Honeywell, but actually works with Acara unofficially. Going into the settings for the new sensor, we get the basics, including battery level, although whether that's for the removable one or the permanent one, I'm actually not sure. Other than that, there's not much else to see. 
This is a photoelectric sensor with many manufacturers now moving to this detection type from ionization based ones. Here's a quick breakdown of the differences between them, so pause the video if required. As you can see, each have their plus points, but overall it would appear photoelectric is less prone to false alarms, which is one reason why people end up turning the ionization models off with potential risks. I've placed this model in the main bedroom as other areas are already covered. Due to the bracket, the device turns itself on once locked into place, and I'll quickly test the alarm to make sure the speaker is working, and it clearly does, so that's a good start. It's worth noting that under the EU certifications previously mentioned, the sirens for smoke detectors are only required to be triggered within four minutes, which seems like a long time. But I doubt you'll need to wait that long, as they usually trigger between 30 and 90 seconds. Sensario informed me that they've tuned their sensor to be more conservative when it comes to detection to minimise false triggers, but still align with the certification recommendations. Previously, I've used something like a piece of smouldering card to do tests, and although this works for PM2.5 sensors, it's actually not a good test for a smoke detector. So in this case, I ordered a canister of this product that does a much more accurate job, whilst not having to worry about removing the smell of burning card afterwards. So I'll give the smoke sensor a generous helping of this and see what happens. So as you can see, the sensor, much to my relief, triggered as expected. I've since tested this about three or four times, and always with the same results I'm happy to report. If we take a quick look at the lock screen on my iPhone, you can see the alarm shows as being triggered from within Apple Home. But interestingly, my G5 Pro also correctly identified an alarm sound, even though they're at opposite ends of the apartment. You can check out my video for the G5 Pro via the link in the corner. I'll go into Apple Home now and tap on the Security tab, and from there to Activity History. And as you can see, smoke was detected at 6 minutes past 5, and after 3 minutes shows that smoke was no longer detected. This is exactly what I'd hoped to see, and it didn't disappoint. Quickly onto the pros and cons, starting as I'm doing more often now with Matter Over Thread, which is always good to see. It's not the first Matter Over Thread smoke detector, but it's currently only one of two that I'm aware of. This doesn't require or even have a third party app, so there's no app to download, or better still, no account to create, which is good news. I think this separate battery for the communication side of things is very useful, and hopefully means a more consistent connection, leaving the other battery to focus on the smoke sensor itself. My other smoke sensors have small mute buttons, so with this one having a large central button, it makes things a little easier if it does inadvertently get triggered. I really like the auto on off feature that is activated when it's connected to the ceiling mount. Whether this is common, I don't know, but it's new to me. My only minor niggle is that it's a little on the large side, which isn't helped by the fairly bland design, but I don't think I'll be looking at it too often, so it's not a deal breaker by any means. Now, some would argue we don't need smart smoke alarms, especially if devices like the G5 Pro or even HomePods can detect alarms too, but to me, the more chances you get of being noticed of an alarm, especially when you're not there, the better. So I guess it's up to the individual. It's also important to note that even if matter over thread were to fail, this device still acts just like a regular smoke detector. So it's no different to a regular smoke detector in these cases. So that's our take on the Sensario smoke detector. Is this the type of device you think benefits from thread? And if so, how? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you've got any questions on this or any of my other videos, ask away and I'll always reply. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, show some love by giving it a like, share if you can, and do subscribe if you haven't done so already. It just remains for me to leave you with this week's words of caution from the American writer Kurt Vonnegut. See you next time. Thank you.